Hello and welcome back to the Microlearning Institute. In this short tutorial we look at Epsilon which is a question from the December 2014 Diploma in IFR examination. In this question we are told about a company Epsilon which acquired 75% of the equity shares in a company called Kappa gaining control of Kappa and this all happened on the 1st of January 2014. And the question asks us to compute the impairment of goodwill and explain how this impairment should be recognized in the consolidated financial statements of Epsilon. And we need to do this under both methods permitted by IFRS 3. So firstly, we need to look at the fair value of the consideration that was paid by Epsilon for the 75% holding in Kappa. The first element of this fair value consideration was manifested in shares and for the 75% of the 12 million shares in Kappa acquired by Epsilon, Epsilon issued two of their own shares for every three shares acquired in Kappa. And at the date of acquisition, the value of Epsilon's shares was trading in the marketplace at $6.50 per share. So consequently, the fair value of the shares issued on that day to acquire 75% of Kappa was $39 million. Now, in addition to issuing shares, Epsilon also agreed to a deferred payment one year after the date of acquisition of $7.15 million. Now, interest rates in the market are running at 10%, so we must discount this future payment to present value, and we can see the calculation, we're dividing by 1.1 to the present value of $6.5 million. Finally, there was a contingent consideration element uh, whose fair value at date of acquisition was valued at $25 million. So overall, the fair value of the consideration paid by Epsilon to acquire a 75% interest in Kappa was, at the date of acquisition, $70.5 million. Now that we know the fair value of the consideration, we can look at the acquisition details. And firstly, we're told about a deferred tax issue that arises at acquisition. This arises because the tax written down value of the net assets in Kappa was valued at 60 million on the tax accounts, whereas in contrast, the fair value of the net assets in the financial statements was valued at $70 million. So as a consequence, we have a $10 million timing difference between the tax valuations and the valuations under IFRS at fair value. Now, since the tax written down value is less than the fair value of the net assets, we must recognize a, a liability in relation to deferred tax. And this liability is calculated at the rate of tax, which we're told is 20%, with respect to the timing difference. So 20% of the 10 million gives us a deferred tax liability of 2 million. Now that we know this, we can now look at the fair value of the net assets at acquisition. And we're told in the question, as we've already seen, that the fair value of the net assets is 70 million. But of course, this does not consider the deferred tax liability due, due to the timing difference between the tax accounts and the IFRS financial statements of 2 million. So consequently, the revised fair value of net assets at acquisition is 68 million dollars. Now we can look, now that we know what the fair value of the consideration at acquisition is and what the fair value of the net assets at acquisition is, we can now begin to calculate goodwill. And firstly, we'll use the full goodwill method. So with this, we recognize firstly the cost in the group. Now we've already calculated the fair value of the consideration in the group at 70.5 million. We also need, under this method, to calculate the non-controlling interest at fair value. And of course, the fair value of the non-controlling interest is reflected by the remaining 25% of the 12 million shares in Kappa at their market value at the date of acquisition. And we're told in the question that that market value at the date of acquisition is $6. So consequently, we can calculate that the non-controlling interest valuation at fair value at the date of acquisition is $18 million. Now, we must compare now the cost of both the group and the non-controlling interest with respect to the share of the fair value of the net assets acquired. So the group 
acquired 75% and the updated, including the deferred tax consideration, fair value of the net assets is $68 million. Whereas the non-controlling interest have 25% of that same fair value net assets. So consequently, we can say that the goodwill at acquisition in the group is $19.5 million. That is the difference between 51 and $70.5 million. Whereas the goodwill at acquisition on the non-controlling interest is $1 million. That's the difference between the $18 million, which is the fair value, and the $17 million, which is the share of the fair value of the net assets. So the goodwill at acquisition is $20.5 million. Now, next we're told about some impairment, and we're told that impairment of 10% of the goodwill is recognized in the post-acquisition period. So the goodwill at acquisition is 20.5, 10% of that. Now 75% of that impairment is allocated to the group, whereas the remaining 25% of the impairment is allocated to the goodwill holding in the non-controlling interest. So therefore, using this method, at year end, the goodwill in the group stands at the difference between 19.5 at acquisition and 1.537 post-acquisition impairment stands at $17.963 million, whereas similarly, the goodwill at year end in the non-controlling interest stands at $0.4875 million, giving us a total goodwill in the consolidated statement of financial position of $18.45 million. Now, alternatively, we could have calculated goodwill using the proportional goodwill method. And using this method, we only consider the goodwill in the group, and we do not value any goodwill in the non-controlling interest. So using this method, we see that the cost of the group share uh, was $70.5 million, this again as already calculated. The share of the fair value of the net assets that was acquired by the group is again 75% of the 68, which was the fair value of net assets, which is 51. And consequently, the goodwill at acquisition is $19.5 million. Now, once again, we're told that 10% of this goodwill would be impaired. So 10% of the 19.5 is 1.95. So at year end, using this method, the goodwill only recognized in the group would be $17.55 million. Thank you very much for looking at this short tutorial from the MicroLearning Institute.